Sam Banu, welcome back to Let's Explore Mongolia. We are halfway through our adventure and we've already learned so much about this country. We've discovered that very few people live in Mongolia despite its huge size. We know that it's home to snow leopards and vultures and that horses are loved here. Last time we even learned about the nomads in Mongolia. People who move from place to place and take all their belongings and livestock with them. Mongolia really does seem like an amazing place, quite unlike anything I've ever seen before. But as we're going to find out, there are difficulties to living here. It is not always an easy life and there are lots of challenges to overcome. Last time, we had just settled in for the night in a gur with some new nomad friends. Now it's morning and we wake up to the smell of breakfast cooking. Are you hungry? Me too. At the table, our hosts serve up bowls filled with what looks like lots of small donuts. This is a very popular breakfast in Mongolia called Burtsog. Your hosts sprinkle lots of toppings like honey, almonds and jam over your Burtsog and it looks absolutely delicious. It's not the healthiest of breakfasts, but it is really, really tasty and very sweet. Then our hosts give us cups filled with a hot drink. This is tea, but it's not like the tea we have back home. This is butter tea, and it's an essential part of any Mongolian meal. To make this tea, Mongolians boil black tea leaves in water alongside yak butter and salt. The tea has a salty taste that Mongolians find refreshing. Can you imagine enjoying a salty drink? It tastes a bit like seawater. It's time to get moving again. And as we prepare to leave, Batar tells us to wrap up really warm because the temperature outside has got really, really cold. It's been quite chilly the entire time we've been in Mongolia. So the thought that it's got even colder is quite concerning. Wow, Batar was not kidding. It is seriously cold. You have never felt cold like this before. Every bit of exposed skin on your face begins to tingle. It's a relief to get in the car and feel some warm air begin to flow inside. Batar explains that every year Mongolia experiences really tough winters when it gets really, really cold. Do you know the temperature at which water freezes? Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So in winter at home, when there's ice on the roads outside or the grass is all frosted, it means that the temperature is zero degrees or lower. Normally at home, it doesn't get much colder than minus four or minus five degrees. In Mongolia, it gets a lot colder than that. A lot colder than zero degrees, a lot colder than minus four or five degrees. In fact, Mongolian temperatures can reach as low as minus 50 degrees. Isn't that incredible? Can you imagine living in such cold temperatures? That's colder than the inside of your freezer at home. And sometimes Mongolia is even colder than the North Pole. The thermometer in the car says that it's minus 27 degrees today. And as you look out over the frozen plains, it is amazing to think that anybody can survive winter here in such cold temperatures. Batar explains that people wear thick clothing of fur and sheepskin and try to stay indoors as much as possible and they burn wood or coal in stoves to produce heat. But sadly, many people in Mongolia are very poor. So they struggle to afford warm clothing to help cope with the cold. Sometimes children don't have enough clothes to keep them warm. Most children walk to school from their homes, but when temperatures are really low, it's too cold for the children to be outside and too cold to walk all the way to school. 
Perhaps you think that not being able to go to school because of the cold sounds like a great thing, a day off. But education is really important. Without school, these children won't learn all the things they need to to get a good job when they're older. Soon, we arrive in a town and go into a building. There are lots of people inside. Most of them are children who are sitting patiently on rows of chairs, with parents looking on from the back of the room. It didn't look like it, but this building is a church. And some Christians from the local area have gathered all these people together for a special meeting. One at a time, each child goes up to the front and is given a package. You watch as the children begin to open their presents, but what's inside? To your surprise, every child has been given a big padded coat and the smiles light up the faces of each child as they pull them on and see what they look like. But there's even more in the packages. There are gloves, there are warm hats, and there's even a pair of new boots. The children are delighted with their gift. Batar explains that each of the children have received what's called a winter kit. These children all have parents who can't afford the clothes that they need to be able to cope with the really cold temperatures. Now, because of the winter kit, they'll no longer miss school and they'll be kept warm and toasty even when they're outside in the cold temperatures. The Christians who give out the winter kits settle everyone down and begin to teach a story from the Bible. They tell the children that the winter kits are just one sign of Jesus' love for them, but that he can give them a much greater gift as well. The Christians who gave out the winter kits settle everyone down and begin to teach a story from the Bible. They tell the children that the winter kits are just one sign of Jesus' love for them, but they, he can give them a much greater gift as well. They explain to everyone that Jesus is the Son of God, that he loves them so much that he came to earth from heaven to die on a cross for their sins. They explain that if the children put their trust in Jesus, their sins will be forgiven and that they can be with him forever in heaven. Later, we discover that amazingly, some of the children decided to become Christians. Even some of the parents at the back of the room became Christians as well. Isn't it amazing how the gift of a winter kit can create such an amazing opportunity to tell people about Jesus. Helping those in need is a really powerful way to show people that God loves them. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus explains that those who belong to him are people who help others in need. He even mentions giving clothes to those who don't have any. If we love and follow Jesus as the king of our lives, we will help others. Jesus says that anything we do for those in need, we do for him. Showing the love of God through our actions is really important. And so often it creates an opportunity to share the love of Jesus with our words as well. So think to yourself, how might you be able to help somebody today and show them the love of Jesus? Before we finish this session, let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for the Christians in Mongolia who give winter kits to children who need them. We pray that as each child receives a kit, they would know how much you love them. We ask that as the good news of what Jesus has done for them on the cross is shared, many boys and girls and their mums and dads would come to put their whole trust in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the end of our third session. Can you believe that we only have one more left? But for now, we're going to do some stickers and colour in the children on our maps. In a moment, the instructions will appear on the screen, so don't forget to press pause to follow all the steps. See you next time for our final adventure in Mongolia. Goodbye.